Hey folks, Captain Dave here. I'm gonna show you something that I recently went through. Well, let me start from the beginning. You know, there was Hurricane Irma, right? And Ur Hurricane Irma pretty much affected the entire state. I did that video about how us here in Jacksonville, we got really lucky. Well, here it is, Irma is over. It's always a kick in the pants in the charter fishing business. This is all the things you've got to take into account because everybody wants to be in the charter business. Oh yeah, it's just so lovely. Right after the hurricane, since the boat sat for about a week because of the hurricane scare, nobody wanted to go and things were getting kind of nasty. Um, I go out and I run my engine in my big horse trough. I put it underneath the engine. I start the engine after it sat for probably five, six days. Um, and I'm not seeing the uh, little pea stream. And then I'm hearing a shushing sound. Well, what it turns out is the drive shaft spun on, or the impeller for the water pump spun on the drive shaft and I can hear this kind of sound. All right, so now I need to get an emergency fix on that. There's a lot of places without power. I had to almost pull teeth for the people that I bought the engine from to do an emergency water pump change out for me. On the way home from the mechanic. So okay, we had hurricane, water pump. There's two. On the way home from out on US-1, I'm coming back home, and there's some construction on the J. Turner Butler Boulevard Highway all around I-95 with all these loopity doop things they're building, and they're just, they're just decimating that area as full as construction. I hit what I called a road mountain. I swerved with the truck, but I couldn't make it with the trailer. And I seen my boat trailer and my boat go up on this on one side with the twin axle trailer. One side went up, and I was moving like 15 miles an hour, maybe. And it flew up in the air. Boat came off the trailer. The trailer went in the air. Boat went up in the air, and everything come flying and smacking down. And I was like, oh my God. Wow, it's going to break my axles on my trailer. All right, so I get home. I'm all excited, hurricane's over. I go fishing. You might have seen that video. First day after Hurricane Irma, me and Dennis were out. And we were catching those jacks at the jetties, and then we ran down and we're fishing the, the freshy water in the river. And we caught Red's drum, and we caught all those trout on the voodoo mullet. Well, while we're out there, which wasn't in the video, I'm noticing some fuel smell. It, I came home, we cleaned all the fish. Um, I came home, I cleaned up the boat, I was tired. You know, I hit the hay early. Got up about 4 o'clock in the morning. Yeah, I couldn't take it any longer. I went out in the dark with my lights on underneath my boat port. And I pulled the plug out of the boat and out shot about three gallons of gasoline right in my face. At least three gallons of gasoline. I about right then thought I was having a cardiac arrest because, you know, leaky fuel tanks are basically a boater's nightmare. It doesn't matter what boat you have. It's something you don't want to get into. Hurricane Irma. Right after the Irma, water pump ain't working on the Suzuki. Now, fuel in the bilge. Leaky gas tank. Hit the bump, blah, blah, blah. Okay, tank. That was the, can that was the, the straw that broke the camel's back. I never, ever smelled fuel, ever before. When that boat jumped up in the air and came slamming down, because I put 125 gallons in a 150-gallon tank. 
thinking, well, if we really, really get hit by this hurricane, people are going to need fuel. It's going to make my boat heavier. I'm going to have fuel no matter what. 125 gallons, I could go from here to Miami and back in my boat. So I got all this extra weight that I normally wouldn't have in the boat because I normally wouldn't fill it up with maybe half a tank, maybe. I'm always in the, I'm in the people carrying business, not in the fuel carrier, fuel barge business. So I've never really filled it up that much. I pump the tank out into every jerry can that I got and I happen to have a fuel tank on wheels with a pump, a mobile 30 gallon tank. Fill that up. So me and my dad are sitting around going, oh my god, I, I, you still got all this fuel. I'm, I got six jerry cans, six gallon jerry cans full of gas. I got this thing full of 30 gallons, this, this uh, mobile on wheels um, tank with the pump. And then I thought, I've got a 55 gallon plastic barrel sitting in the garage. I cut the top off of it. I had it full of water just in case, you know, the electricity was out for an extended period. Who knows? After the hurricane, I filled up with a 55 gallons full of fresh water. So I could flush toilets, wash my face, take a bath, who the heck knows. You just do, you just do stuff during hurricanes that you don't normally do. You just do it. You get supplies put together because you don't know what the hell is going to go on. And we pump with an electronic little fuel pump all the rest of the gas out of the boat into this 55 gallon barrel. So now I got 125 gallons of fuel sitting in my garage. Then on the 19th I get a hold of two great guys. MS Mobile Welding and Fabrication. I just found them on the internet. Mike and his son Ian Suggs, they live way the hell out on the west side of Jacksonville. I mean, they are a solid hour from me. And remember, they're still in Jacksonville, Florida. So I call them then they come on over. So what do we do? We cut the tank out. So then what do I have to do? I have to start ordering things. I start looking into the company that built the 150 gallon tank that I got in the boat. That's $1,800 to $2,000 with a $500 shipping bill all the way from Washington State. Okay. Can't do that. Um, <clears throat> So what do I start thinking about? Other local, maybe in Florida, aluminum tank builders. And I talked to one of the largest fuel tank builders in the country as far as supplying them. And they're out in Perry, Florida. They were devastated by the hurricane. They still don't have all their employees back. The guy says, it'll be six weeks. We could probably get you a tank in six weeks. I say how much? Fifteen hundred to eighteen hundred dollars, just like the other guy. And I'm thinking to myself, I never filled the 150 gallons into that tank ever. If you looked in, inside, there's probably a, a line inside. Okay. So I start calling around, and I start looking on the internet for a plastic tank. And I settled, settled on a molar, under-deck, cross-polyethylene tank built for under-deck. Well, I call them, and I'm like, hey, I need this now. I want to talk to a, um, a sales rep from my area. I want to get a tank now. i got to have it. You know what he says to me? This, the customer service guy says, well, they're right on Amazon. All right. I go on the Amazon, I find a 60 gallon. That'll fit. But it need, we need to do some serious modification. Prime, it comes free shipping. I get that, and I get a different sending unit than it came with. Um, I get a better sending unit. Things are going good. Mike and Ian, give me a date. 
after they cut the deck, they give me a date where they're going to come back and they're going to do all the fabrication and everything for me. So we get the deck cut, we put the new tank in, we have to fabricate, you have to hold it. The bottom of the aluminum tank was flat. Well, not the plastic tank. It's one of these like belly tanks. It goes on an angle with a flat spot. So we have to go in and we have to support it on all sides. A bulkhead in the front, plates on the bottom, plate on the towards the bow, which would be sort of the front of the tank, uh, plates across the you know angle and stuff across these spe special grooves they built into the tank. Um, everything so it won't shift around, but at the same time leaving four percent wiggle room for expansion and contraction because that's what these tanks will do. So, what did I do today? I painted the deck. Everything's done. Everything is basically done. Tanks in, supported, welded deck, deck painted, and guess what you're going to see now? You're going to see the entire thing in video. But, the funny thing is, is you want to be in the charter business, you want to do this, you want to do... Really? Really? Mm, let me tell you something, folks. There ain't not a damn thing glory about being in the fish and charter business. 21 years have probably never been more stressed in my entire life. I've had engines fail, boom, done, completely, and it's Labor Day weekend. So I was literally out of commission for about a good 10, 12 days. There's nothing glory about this, okay? But my dad said something to me that makes super sense. What don't kill you is just going to make you stronger. And I'm telling you, I have friends, neighbors, and everything. They go to work every day. They go to work. Boom, they go to work, they come home. They go to work, they come home. They go to, and they're pissing and moaning their asses off. Like... So, you go to work, you come home, forget about it. That's what you'd think. If these people only knew, go out, work for yourself, and if you want real stress, do that. It ain't fit for everybody, let me tell you. I've been doing it now so long, I don't even know how to think any other way. Everything is a catastrophe, of course. Everything is a catastrophe because your income is based on it. You've got people counting on you. i got customers counting on me. To make a long story short, you're going to see it in the video. This is replacing the aluminum 150 gallon tank with a molar cross polyethylene plastic tank. People, I looked on the entire YouTube and there's nothing about installing a plastic tank. Well, I guess people could sit around for four to six weeks and get an aluminum tank built, I can't. My tank came off of Amazon. <laughs> I mean, how lucky was that? This is what you're going to see. I wanted to do this so it led up. I just didn't want to do a video of people cutting my boat in pieces. Alright, so thanks for watching. Subscribe. As everybody else says, hit the notifications. I'm I think just short of 5,000 subscribers. Doesn't sound a lot, like a, like a ton. But I'm just a fisherman in Jacksonville, Florida that takes people, takes people out fishing. And um, so 5,000 subscribers is pretty big for me. And uh, the way I'm looking at it is, is if everybody got notified of at least every single video, can you believe the views that I would get? Instead of 350, I mean, there's about 350 that view the videos within the first week. Can you imagine if everybody came over and checked out the video that's a subscriber of mine? Woo, man, I'd be hitting the big time. And that's what I've always wanted to do. I wanted to really, really up my channel. But, hey... I'm a fisherman in Jacksonville, Florida, just giving it, it, giving it my best. 
So I know I haven't had a video. I usually do one a week. But now I'm back on track. Am I any grayer? <laughs> Man, I should be like gray as heck, huh? Alright. Thanks for watching and stand by for all the tank change out footage. Got it? Alrighty, sir. Okay. Waiting post off stage one. gas tank clean on the top just nasty right here in the back mm -hmm. now the bottom oh that's the big deal nice. well, I was thinking maybe the you know the saws all thing you chop them off well, obviously these are gonna have to come off it looks like these are already part of this thing so put it up underneath there's here. the deck folks This isn't even a weld, this is bent around in a U shape. And I can come in here like this and look at this. This is what can happen to your gas tank. This is aluminum, not even a weld. The weld's over here. This is a bent U shape. And look what I can do with my pocket knife. <laughs>